Hey guys, Gamer 34 here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to build a shift register like this one. And for those of you who don't know what a shift register does, it takes a data input and shifts it either left or right uh, one spot at a time. So let's go ahead and input the number 5 here. If these are, are these significant bits on this side. And you'll notice that we don't have an output. We have to actually save this into the registers inside. So all we have to do is we can click one of these buttons. It doesn't really matter because it's not going to shift it because there's no data in it yet. So we're just going to initialize that data. And you'll see that we have now the input in there. So we can actually remove the levers. And we still have that output. So now what we can do is we can either move this left or right. Now, this top button moves it left, so it'll move it that way. And the bottom button down here moves it right, so it'll move it that way. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to move it left. And you'll notice, synced, it moves over left. And then we'll move it left again. Now, the special feature of this shift register that not all shift registers do, and the one that we're building isn't going to do, but it's super easy to do, is let's say we move it right, and then we move it right once more. We're back at its original position. If we move it right one more, it'll loop around. And you'll see it looped around. Here's the, the lowest, least significant bit and it actually loops around to be the most significant bit. We can shift it left or right one more time, and you'll see that we just, keep, wow, I can't press the button. You'll see that it just keeps moving that data over just a little bit at a time. And the next thing you know, we have the full output right here. Now what I can also do is I can move it back the other way. Say I want to move it left. See it come out over there. Keeps coming out, and now we have the full number back to here. So this can do rotations, that's what that's called, it's called rotations. The one that I'm going to be showing you guys how to build is not going to do that, just because it's just as simple as hooking up a bus and not many people need a rotation function on a barrel shift, uh, on a shift register like I did. Um, now, there's an easy way to reset it. You just power this right here, and it clears everything that's in there. So let's get it started and build this. So what you're going to want is you're going to want to get some building blocks of your choice and some components like these. You're going to need a comparator. You're going to need a repeater. So we're just going to start with getting a block underneath me. We're going to build the basics of it. Now we're going to only build like a 5-bit one, but this is how they start. So we're going to build our basic repeater lock mechanism there. We're going to also just have a couple extra wires or lengths coming this way. And we're going to do this. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select over here. And we're going to select right here. As you can see, I have CUI. We're going to stack this four more times. That looks like a good amount. Um, so basically what we have here is our register lock. So if, normally this is just going to be inverted to lock all the inputs. Now what we're going to do is since we want it to be able to shift in two directions, we need the data to come both up, below, and above. So you'll see how that plans out. We're just going to do this. Actually, we'll do this on this one here so we can get a baseline stack. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. Actually, we will do this. We'll do this, and we'll get a half slab. So, we can use this type of half slab, and we're going to do this. So this and this output is actually going to end up coming up over like this. And back over. So now we have our output being bust over, and this output is going to go to this next cell, because this is going to be the shifting left function. So we're going to need to get data to this left to this cell somehow. So we're going to do it like this. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be permanent yet, the way this actually plans out. But we're going to need a comparator there on subtraction mode. We're going to have that come around like that. Now if I am 
I'm not crazy, that should output. Yes, it does. But what else we're going to need, we're going to need this bottom output right here. Come underneath, like so. Actually come along this way. And actually, might be able to do it right here. No. We're going to have to do it right here. Probably do it like this. So also, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to power into here and have it come out the comparator. Now that comparator also needs to be on subtraction mode. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the position down here, position up here, and I'm just going to copy from here. I'm going to paste here. Make sure you paste minus A. Just clear my selection. I'm just going to keep doing that. Until we get the desired amount of bits that we want. I'll just do it one more time and remove whatever excess. <clears throat> so we only need five bits. So one, two, three, four, five. This one is left over. Careful not to get rid of that redstone right here, because that redstone is actually going to lock this repeater. <clears throat> so this is unnecessary now, because it can't shift that way anymore. And if I look down here, these are all hooked up properly. So this is the basis of our shift register. We have some things allowing input to go this way, some things allowing input to go the other way, and that's how we're going to get this dual feature. Although I do need to paste minus A right here, or actually over one. Nope, undo that, that of course messed up. I assume right here then, no one to find out. You know what? I'll try one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna paste minus it, or I'm just gonna build it by hand. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So there is a certain levels of derp, but it works now. So we have this actually built. This one is just in the next over leftover stack. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and this just needs to be lowered. Okay, so now to actually set up the control logic for this. So first off, I know that I'm going to need a monostable here. Because what a monostable does is it creates a one pulse, uh, or it creates one pulse out of an input. And I want that pulse to be two ticks, because what basically you do is you subtract the amount of ticks that you have inverted by the ticks that you have not inverted, or the other way around, the non-inverted ticks by the inverted ticks, so that leaves us a two tick pulse, which gives us enough, enough time for these repeaters to be opened and then closed again. So if you see, I input a lever, and it makes a pulse, and that opened and then that closed. So that's gonna be the basis behind this. And actually, I'm going to design this just a little differently, just a tad bit differently, actually. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to then fit a comparator here. And I'm going to do... Oh, this has to come back just one more. I'm going to do... Whoops. Torch here. Repeater on three ticks. One, two, three. It's done there, and then it's done here. So that's another form of a monostable, and the reason I do that is just for an easy reset right here. So I can do this, and this is our reset. Actually, we'll do a reset.
like this, so it doesn't power into that over there. So this is a reset. <coughs> and that comparator needs to be on subtraction. <coughs> so now what we're going to do is going to replace repeaters on all of these right here. Come up and kind of do a stagger. For now, this is going to come over here. It's just for now, just so we have a place to move it out of the way. These ones down here are a lot easier to do. And let's take the output bus over here. Okay, so now we have the majority of it set up, we just need to add the monostables and some timing circuits. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to add monostables here. The types of monostables, we can actually do these overhead monostables and actually move them in a wee bit, like this, and do that. And we can put our lever button there, and we could do the same thing here. And two, torch, and redstone dust, and we have our lever and our repeaters here. What else we have to do is take the output of this and bring it to the input of this, like so, and also do it like so for this. Now I'm not sure if the timing is going to be right, Actually, I'm going to place buttons on that instead. The timing isn't right. It's as simple as adding ticks and removing ticks. It's actually a lot less complicated than it seems. But basically what's going to happen is this is going to allow data to be moved, and this is going to allow the cell to be written to. So. Well, that's an issue, so let's just move this back one more. Okay, let's do this for ease of inputting numbers without having interfering this bottom and yeah, we'll have that there, so one, two, three, four, five, just like we originally planned. Let's enter the number three, let's press one of these. You see the number three gets inputted. So this top one is actually going to move it left, because the way the comparators are facing it'll move it left, so let me get a sign out. Label this left. So if we go ahead and press it, it moved it left. <clears throat> There's no syncing issues, I don't have to do anything. I move it left again, it moves it left. Now, what shall happen when I move it left again? It still is accessible right here, except it just died for whatever reason. I'm sure there's some sort of reason for that, but I'm not really in the mood to debug it. And then we move it left again. Um, and I think I see what's going on. Alright, whatever. Um, that's derping. Um, I know that much. Um, just not quite sure exactly why, but okay it moved that way. So now if we put data into here, we initialize it, 
like so. We get it there, and we can move it right. So let's take a sign out. RGHT. Little arrow. And I didn't get a button on that one yet, so. You see it moves it this way. Now watch what happens when it gets to the edge. It just goes away because it has it's not I didn't set up any hardware to loop it back around. To loop it back around, you would literally just have this, the output here, get looped all the way back around into the input here on a on a comparator. All these comparators are doing are acting like AND gates. And now you can see that we can just keep shifting this data left. It doesn't destroy any data really, except for, for whatever reason it destroys data here. Um, not really sure why, as soon as I shift it left, it'll go... Oh! Signal strength. So that's an issue. Um, not really sure how I'm going to fix that by one signal strength. Um, we could see if adding a repeater like that doesn't cause an issue. It might, might not. Yeah, it just caused an issue because it didn't turn off fast enough. I mean, that's fixable by doing that, so let's go ahead and do that and shift it. Wow, I just realized I put my button the wrong way, or my arrow the wrong way. Right that way. Wow. Way to go, me. Alright, so I have the number shifted in twice. Alright, guess not. Alright, let's move it left. Anyway, this is basically the issue that most people stumble upon. The signal strength and syncing stuff to then make it work properly. I'm actually gonna... I'm actually just gonna have a repeater like that. That should get it. Yeah, that gets the signal strength to what we need. And then actually just to reset it. do it like this because to reset it we just need a pulse on the torch so if you see what happens when I press this here it only turns off the torch and doesn't power into the repeater so it makes a pulse that's longer than two ticks to reset everything in it so now if I look at this if I enter data here to move it left then I actually shift it left it's stored on the output here, which is what we want. So there you go. This is a little 5-bit one. I had to do some trickery to get it signal strength uh, to reach further. Um, you can just see syncing that I had to do. Um, yeah. So if you guys like this uh, tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you're not already. Um, and let me know what else you'd be interested in. Um, spoiler alert. I've been working on a few CPU layouts, as you can see there and here and this one runs at 14 ticks which is pretty remarkable for no pipelining so since this runs i'm going to be doing a video on it not right now i want to try to get a little bit more complicated of a program running on that but i'll get back to you guys on that until then enjoy